Thank you for joining our video and podcast series featuring some of our 2024 Expanding Excellence Award winners. This series is brought to you by IUCX, a nonprofit educational entity that provides the largest forum for utility customer service, education, and networking in the world. Your host for this series is Julio Morales, Head of Strategy and Engagement for IUCX. Julio, please introduce today's guest. This year we're recognizing our best CIS implementation winners, and today I'm joined by Frank Flynn, Senior Manager of Customer Operations and Technology for Newfoundland Power. We have to start by saying congratulations, Frank, on a well-executed project, and I'm sure you've got a lot to tell us about your learnings of the process. Well, thanks, Julio. Um, I honestly say Newfoundland Power honored for this award. Um, I think it's icing on the cake for us. It highlights the tremendous accomplishment, the tremendous focus, the efforts that our team put forward to deliver this project on time and on budget. Frank, we know that major issues and opportunities drive large projects like the CIS project. Could you walk us through some of the drivers for your project? So our approach to excellence in customer service delivery, it starts with our customer information system. Initially, when we implemented that legacy system, we expected it to last about 20 years but through continual investments, expansions, we managed to extend that service life by about 10 years. But as part of those efforts, routine technology planning, we do risk assessments periodically. Um, our last risk assessment happened in 2018, which showed that there was no viable alternatives to continue running the system. Specifically, we measured vendor risks, vendors were no longer stepping up and continuing to support and maintain the, uh, the application. Uh, support capacity risks, so internally, both our staff, staff from uh, external contractors, no longer available to continue to support, enhance and maintain the application. And business enabling risks. We documented that those risks are high now because customers changing expectations, we could no longer support and meet those requirements. As part of that, we documented that these risks, although high, they're going to increase over time. So the time was right for us, so I guess our major driver was risk and showing that those risks are here now, they're going to increase, and uh, the time was right to uh, embark on a project like this. I think uh, I can handle this from a, from a very high level perspective because there were many capabilities that came with this new application. Um, generally though, we want an application that could provide long-term customer service continuity into the future. So we framed this up from three perspectives. Uh, we needed to provide service continuity. And generally that's about the risk. So taking those risks and ensuring that the system can meet our existing business processes uh, and showing that they could morph and, and develop and to be delivered over time. Um, from a long-term perspective, that also meant that vendors would be available to provide updates and continual enhancements, uh, which would keep in line with industry trends or uh, regulatory requirements. The second item was maintaining service efficiency. Um, so we had improved service efficiency with the existing system over time. But we're finding now that manual processes were being integrated into the application. Um, for example, we could no longer deliver net metering. Uh, we had to build those customers outside our application. So we wanted to show that a modern platform would allow us to address future change as part of the base product or as part of what the vendors were providing to us. And we also want to demonstrate that we could enhance customer efficiency and effectiveness. Um, expectations change over time, and certainly with the existing system, we implemented new features like uh, budget billing or automated payment plans or um, uh, self-service items. But it come to a point where the application was fully extended. We could no longer extend it to meet those changing customer service expectations. So a new system would allow us to do that through uh, primary configurations or some minor program changes. Um, it's probably worth also saying because our system was so old, the extensions that we deployed uh, were custom. They were one of, they were specific to Newfoundland Power. So as part of this application, we wanted to retire a lot of those, decrease the technical footprint, the complexities that we had grown, so that uh, we could have these extensions to be offered by the product itself. Uh, that was another key driver for us. Frank, implementing a new CIS system often uh, unveils opportunities for improvements. Could you walk us through some of the learnings that you had? Well, 
for us, this is a once in a generation project for new flat power. We had never taken on a project of this size, this complexity before. Um, New Flame Power, we're an integrated transmission, generation, distribution company in uh, Atlantic Canada. Um, we have approximately 90% of the customers on the island of land. So it was imperative that we lay a framework that would ensure uh, quality and positive experiences, both for our customers and for, uh, for staff on New Flame Power. Those integrations um, that we had complete, completed f uh, throughout the project. Um, they needed to be retaught because all the business processes that we had built up were specific and customized to Newfoundland Power. And we wanted an application to be able to provide those base or as close to base as, as possible. But there are some other areas that were complex for us um, where it was a once in a generation project for Newfoundland Power. Organizational capacity was a challenge for us. We don't have uh, we don't have folks that are sitting on the sidelines waiting for the next big project to come up. So planning for how we would address that was, uh, was substantial. Uh, the extent of training, uh, we had never delivered a program like this that required tens of thousands of hours of training. We, uh, we actually had to build a new training room in order to accomplish the training that we needed to complete. Data conversion was massive. Um, hundreds of thousands, millions of transactions to be extracted, transformed, and loaded into the new system and to meet complex business requirements had to be uh, had to be quality assessed and the testing that we had to do with that, hundreds of thousands of test steps, we had never gone through a program like that before. Early challenges, uh, supply chain caused interesting issues when we were uh, implementing our architecture. Uh, new plan versions of software, so we started with one version, the vendor came out with a substantial new release months into our program, we had to pivot and go to that next release. Uh, that created challenges. And no downtime cutover plans. Um, a key goal for us was our customers would not be impacted. So coming up with a cutover plan that allowed us to be seamless for customers was, uh, was extremely important. And we had to do all of that within a backdrop of um, regulatory delay. So we were delayed about three, four months um, from when we wanted to start this due to uh, questions and things we had to work through with our regulator which resulted in a compressed timeline for us right at, uh, right at project start. Originally, we would have liked to have had a, a 21 month, we filed for a 21 month project, but because of delay and our forecasted uh, due date, we had to work a plan to uh, implement within 18 months. So it sounds like a very complicated project. Could you walk us through some of those complexities? Um, as I mentioned, this is a once in a generation project for Newfoundland Power and we don't have that reserve capacity sitting on the sidelines waiting for the next big project. So we had to do a lot of uh, prerequisite activities, a lot of planning to ensure that other major projects for Newfoundland Power, for example, um, our outage management system replacement, our GIS system uh, replacement, get those projects done early ahead of this uh, program to ensure that we would be in a good position from a company perspective to staff it, but also prioritize other options, um, our asset management replacement. Um, we move that out to be implemented beyond the scope of this project after this project was completed. Um, leading into the project, we took on that difficult task of reaching out throughout the organization to find the staff in various departments, various locations that would be key for this program. Uh, providing a little bit of extra training, some upskilling, backfilling their positions because they would be 100% dedicated to this program. Um, and certainly looking out to third parties and, and doing some, um, some searching with local partners for staff augmentation for some of that backfilling and certainly for, uh, for program support. So obviously a major undertaking for the company. Could you walk us through some of the organizational challenges with capacity? Additionally, we, we wanted to be able to assist the project management office, so we went outside, we engaged third-party uh, providers to do health checks and quality assurance throughout the program to ensure that we're progressing uh, well for the, for the project. So Frank, you mentioned a lot of uh, timeline constraints uh, and issues. Um, could you walk us through some of what drove that and what happened as a result of it? So our plan targeted a written in stone timeline for August 2023 and there are a number of reasons for that. I think the first one is we are publicly exchanged on the New York Stock Exchange. So um, 
there are a number of Sarbanes Oxley requirements that we have to adhere to for financial system changes in the last quarter of a year. But also the fall is a traditionally very busy time for Newfoundland Power. Um, our university semester changes over, so we have a vast number of move in, move outs. We didn't want to be bringing a new solution in when uh, the contact center are very busy handling uh, those service requests. And also, um, the fall is a traditional storm season for us, so we didn't want to be implementing a new customer information system while we could have se severe or extreme weather events. And, you know, our staff, um, we had pulled from many areas of the, org of the organization. Having those staff uh, available for future projects was important, so we wanted to be able to deliver on time for, for that. Um, if we didn't implement in the fall, it would have likely have meant that uh, we would have been delayed four or five months before we'd be able to start the project back up again and, and do our cutover, which would have meant significant cost overruns for us. Um, so it was important to deliver at that time frame. Yet, the backdrop here was hundreds of requests for information from a regulator. Um, our filing was taken out of the regular filing process and uh, carved off on its own because the regulator needed the extra diligence that caused extra time delays. Uh, we had technical conferences where we had to sit in front of a panel and they would ask us questions on why is the project necessary to happen now, why can't it be delayed further. Um, we progressed through all that and eventually got, uh, got our full approval, but our consumer advocate wasn't satisfied that uh, he felt the project could still be delayed, so we actually um, we had a court challenge and we had to work through that, which indeed uh, also interjected uh, some extra time in our, uh, in our approval process. And then early in our program, I mentioned we had some supply chain challenges. So instead of being able to jump on our architecture and deliver, we had to pivot and um, create some virtual server space in, the, in, in cloud facilities and eventually migrate those back to, uh, to the uh, equipment when it, uh, when it got delivered for us. Another item that uh, caused us timeline delays was um, a software pivot. So we started with a particular version of the vendor software but two or three months after we had started our program and had configurations and initial setups completed, um, we had to decide, do we want to pivot to the next version? And it was a substantial release, um, so we had to weigh the pros and the cons of that. Eventually the pros, uh, we found the pros weighed out and we did pivot, um, but it caused some scheduling delays and some, some rework of our activities. I think in the end, um, as we um, submitted to the regulator at 21 one program, we had to pivot and compress that timeline back to 18 months and uh, revise our program and our uh, uh, scheduling to ensure that we could still deliver that scope uh, within the time period that we had proposed. Frank, we talked a little bit about your timeline and some of your hard, fast uh, ex uh, requirements for the project. How about the budget? How did you guys do there? That mantra of on time, on budget, uh, phrasing was delivered continually throughout our program. Um, I think our teams were probably so sick of me and uh, our senior leadership continuing to, to push that phrase forward at every status meeting, every update, every major deliverable. Um, in addition, our program was an 18-month program, but we had budgeted for um, maybe four months of post-implementation support where we kept the project team together and following that we, um, we allowed another three months of, because we had now four months of uh, system use under our belt, we wanted to target some specific areas to help with uh, efficiency optimizations or effect, more effective customer service delivery. So we kept the skeleton team together to, to help with that, um, addressing those key areas. Um, although we had many supply chain challenges and many delays early in the program, we managed to deliver on time but by the time we put our budgeting together and uh, closed out project expenses, we actually delivered this program 5% under budget. Um, I think a large part of that was due to the, the fabulous team, both internal and the SI help that we had. Frank, with the implementation of CIS system, it's often true that um, efficiencies and, and new opportunities arise. Could you tell us about your experience with your project? Our key customer service metric is customer satisfaction. We measure it monthly with an independent provider 
who will uh, sample customers from Newfoundland Power who has had interactions with us. They tally that up and they report it back to Newfoundland Power every quarter. Uh, prior to the start of our program, our customer satisfaction score was 87.9. Um, two months after go live was when the next customer satisfaction score was measured. We were actually virtually unchanged from the score that we had prior to implementation at 87.8. .8. So that met a key goal for us to have a seamless transition for customers when we brought this new system up. A second metric that's really important in Newfoundland Power is average handle time. Um, our average handle time was measured uh, three weeks after implementation and it had returned back to almost virtually the same average handle time as it was prior to the start of our program. Uh, that can take many months to implement and uh, we were very uh, pleased with that, uh, that return to normal. So for your project, team building and the team experience was a big component of it. Could you walk us through some of the programs that you implemented to ensure that cohesiveness within the team? There are a number of components that build up our team building experience. Uh, I think key to it was dedicated program staff. All our key staff were 100% dedicated to the project. Um, we had done all the prerequisite activities to ensure that those folks were freed up so they could focus and concentrate on the project. It was certainly a, um, a de-stressor for folks to be able to focus on the project implementation and not worry about their day jobs. Our SI did the same. All key staff were 100% dedicated to the project. I think another important ingredient was uh, our dedicated facility. So we had a, a 10,000 square foot building leased for the duration of the project. It had um, many meeting rooms, uh, kitchen, dozens of project offices for, uh, for staff. Our key staff, everyone had their own office. Um, I think it was a great perk for many of them because in their old job they never had a physical office so having a defined space for them was a, was a great morale booster and a satisfaction item for them. But early in the project days, COVID was still a very real item for us. Um, so the fact many people had an office, um, it certainly helped with the vast number of virtual meetings that were being held. Um, I think having a dedicated space also allowed those close relationships to build. And that was a key ingredient for us that when times got tough, uh, people had friendships, people had relationships that they built up and it made those tough, uh, tough decisions much easier to work through. Another important ingredient for our team building was openness and transparency. We, um, we focused to ensure that people understood priorities, they understood challenges, uh, they understood how we worked through those. Um, every team meeting, every status meeting, all project members were invited to. Um, defect meetings, uh, we brought testers into those meetings so they could understand how we're progressing through issues and could provide detailed um, information to drive out what a particular issue was. Um, our third party uh, quality assurance and assessments, they were exposed to all team members. Everyone understood how a third party was feeling our project was, uh, was progressing. And then generally from team building, right from our executive sponsor, he understood how important it was to develop those close relationships. And he also understood how important it was to um, celebrate your successes and have fun. You know, right from project kickoff, our, um, our SI, they're not from Newfoundland. So we have a, um, a traditional honorary ceremony where we allow people from outside the province to become an honorary Newfoundlander. So uh, we had some fun with that at our initial project kickoff. Uh, project kickoff was actually also St. Patrick's Day weekend, which is a, a fun time in, in Newfoundland. So we, uh, myself and another team member, we brought in some guitars and we played some uh, traditional folk songs for everyone at that, uh, at that project kickoff. But throughout the program, hiking in Newfoundland is very scenic. We encouraged uh, ad hoc and sometimes coordinated hikes um, to take in our coastline. Tours, um, we had various tours, whale watching, uh, going to a bird sanctuary, going to um, our university which has a, um, a simulator to simulate ocean going vessels and how they would train people to uh, maneuver those vessels. We went down in that and took that tour in. Um, we visited, um, we did a retreat with a senior manager. He's got a summer home about 45 minutes outside the city. So we took a day to go there and 
has some business meetings and some status updates in the morning, but then barbecue and some fun activities on the water in the evening. We created a green space outside of uh, our office in the wooded area and cleared an area, brought in some picnic tables, put some flowers and made some plants uh, available. And people could use that then as a, a sanctuary for, for a lunch break or for a, for a break to get away from things. We visited Toronto, so instead of our SI coming to Newfoundland, we, uh, we met them halfway for one of, the, uh, one of the workshop meetings. Because getting to Newfoundland is not that easy, so we, uh, we split the difference and went there and uh, did a, a tour of CN Tower and had a vendor-sponsored uh, dinner and took in a baseball game. And they went on special occasions, birthdays, uh, births. We had people that gave, uh, that had uh, new babies arrive. We had retirements, uh, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween. We celebrated all those occasions. Um, we come up with some unique uh, options. For example, uh, we have one called Punch a Bunch, where we encourage people to, um, to complete their tasks during the week. And the more tasks you completed, the more opportunities you got to punch a prize on a board and um, potentially either win something or get a, get a try again card. <laughs> um, and of course, all good things come to an end. So um, after our last dress rehearsal, we had a graduation ceremony, uh, a formal event off-site where we recognized people's tremendous accomplishment and had some great prizes and a, and a great dinner to, uh, to rally the folks for the next significant activity, which was our, our goal that weekend. Frank, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for sharing your experiences with your CIS project. And again, congratulations on winning Best CIS Award.